Glorious God, we thank you for another opportunity that you've given us to share your word again with the whole world. Father, we thank you. We ask that in this week's moment of truth, you will help us to grow deeper and deeper in the understanding of your word and your thoughts for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We appreciate all of you. It's moment of truth once again this week. Thank you so much for being with us, for being part of these blessings that God is reeling out onto the world. The truth of his word is indeed a blessing. Last week, we talked about the dangers of abundance that when you are not prepared for the blessings of God, when such blessings come, they may cause you hurt. And so we resolved that all of us need to be prepared, need to be prepared. Whatsoever we're asking God for should be based on the scope or the level of our preparedness. God on his own part is so faithful, he's able to do all. In fact, it says that before you open your mouth to ask, God says he will do it. And say, whatsoever you speak to my hearing, so will I do. Beautiful. What a wonderful God we serve. This week, we really want to talk about those things that can help us to attract destiny help us. And so the topic for this week is attracting your destiny helper. It's indeed important to have destiny helpers. Remember we talked about uh, hedges. We said we should not break hedges. We should not destroy those hedges. The families, the elderly persons amongst us, and those helpers that God raises for us every moment. And so, for you to be able to have helpers, there are things you must do. There are requirements, there are elements that you must have, whether by way of training, learning the Word of God, learning from the experiences of other leaders, other people who have successfully attracted destiny helpers. These are things that we need to do. But before we go in to look at those things that are important for us to do, or character habits that we need to inculcate, I want to state this clearly, that God is so good in the business of providing for his own children. God does not send any person out without equipping such person. In our sojourney on the earth here, God has made adequate preparations, spiritual, material, human resources, that are required to enable you pass through this life journey. They all been set. And I want to add that there is sufficient money around the whole world for every child of God that wants to embark on any uh, effective, fruitful, productive venture that will bring glory to God. There is so much money around the corner. What you hear often is there is no money. There's no money to start a business. There's no money to start a church. There's no money to start charity activities. No, it's a lie. There is so much available, hidden treasures. We only need to understand how we can access them. And so today, we want to use the scriptures to talk about those kind of habits, those things that God desires that we do conduct ourselves such that we can attract those blessings. In fact, even the birds of the air are fed by God. They are attracted to one point. They are led by certain things. And so if you make your life attractive, good things will certainly locate you. Now, I we take our reading today from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14 to 23, there's the story of King Saul, the first king of Israel. The Bible says that the Spirit of God left him, and so an evil spirit came troubling him. And so his servants advised him and said, Look, look out for a minstrel. Look out for somebody who can skillfully play divine music. 
Wow, divine music can also cast demons and uh, and attacks away from people. You know, this was a king who ordinarily would say has everything, but he was not in his rightful senses. And so the servant said, "Yes, they have found someone." Who plays skillfully? That's why I want to draw attention to. The word of God in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, states some criteria regarding David. And I call those the entire package of those things written there as David's beauty. I refer to them as David's own beauty. You see, beauty is made up of different different facets for a lady to look beautiful you see them dressing the lips dressing the eyebrows doing the hairs rightly putting everything in order God has raised you for your generation for your nation with things that adorn you those are things that will make and bring people destiny help us closer to you in the case of David there are four things I want to share with us according to 1 Samuel chapter 14 to 23. Number one thing, even before we talk about those things, is for you to understand that background though matters, but it is not everything. Your poor background, your distorted background, your background that was full of rejection, could delay your achievements in life, but cannot, and I repeat, cannot deny you those achievements in life, if only you're focused. And so you hear many people even complain that, oh, my background is such that I cannot make it, I cannot achieve that greatness. No, our background is in our Lord Jesus Christ who has paid for it and everything. So when you accept him, you are saved. And so let's take these elements that we see that I refer to as David's own beauty. Number one is that it was said to King Saul that David was cunning. He was skillful in playing the harp. In our days today, what are you skillful in doing? that can attract favor to you. You can be skillful in managing your family relationship. There are crises all over the places. There are troubles, ups and downs all over the places. But what determines your effectiveness is how you manage. How skillful are you in rebuilding broken relationships? Relationships are not to be broken. Because when you break them, it takes a lot of energy, much more than ever before, to put them out together, to put the pieces together. And so we see, it's said of David that he was cunning, he was skillful in playing the harp, such that each time he was playing it, the Spirit of God was accompanying his notes and his keys to an extent that his music could deliver the troubled king. He was talented. To be cunning means to be talented. If you're not talented, you can learn. And so when you say money is not coming your way, favor is not coming your way, in which aspect of your life are you skillful? See a dying man diligent in his own work. He said he will not sit amongst mean people. The world is looking for people that are skillful. Looking for nations that are skillful. If your nation, your community is skillful in one thing or the other, you will attract destiny helpers. Number two thing that was common with David, it's written that he was a mighty, valiant man and man of war. Oh yes, we are not encouraging anybody to keep fighting war. Wars are not good. They are devastating. But then, bringing it to our present life, are you valiant in anything? Can you be said to be a man of war in the spiritual realm, ready to protect your family from devourers, 
ready to protect your wife, your husband, your children, no matter the situation. David stood in for Israel. He was a man of war right from his own background as a ship keeper. When divorce came, David withstood them and he conquered them. And he brought that to managing the destiny of Israel. Goliath stood against Israel, mocked the king who was well armored, who had soldiers. But he was afraid of confronting Goliath. David, man of war, stood. And today God is saying, he's looking for people who can be valiant in the spirit, who can stand in for their nations, who can cry out to God, who can withstand the Goliath of our days in the spirit realm. Can you afford to do that? Companies are looking for men and women, young people, young executives that can stand firm to defend the integrity of the companies. Jesus said, when I come, can we still find faith on earth? Do you have enough faith to stand in for your corporation, for your nation? Even when things look so, so, so severe and gloomy? These are the questions. The whole world is looking for such people. Destiny helpers are there looking for such young people, young women that can boldly stand and say, yes, we're able to do it. Number three thing that was good about David, part of his own beauty was that David was prudent in matters. Prudent means being careful, being able to sort out his own ship, making sure that what he took out, he was able to bring back home. Can it be said of you that you're prudent? You are not prudent yet. You're looking for destiny helpers. They are very close to you, but they are watching you, studying you. Remember that it was one of the servants to King Saul that recommended David. He said, I've seen the son of Jesse who is cunning, is playing, who is prudent in matters, who is a valiant man. People watch you. People study you. People are watching how careful you are, how prudent, how diligent you are in your activities. Are you a political leader? Are you prudent? Can you be prudent over the affairs of those who have elected you and not amass wealth for your personal self-aggrandizement? People are watching you. People are looking out for people that can stand for them, that can hold on to their resources and defend these resources for the benefit of the people. That was what David was good in doing. And that earned him a palatial place. He was brought into the palace. Remember, he was a shipkeeper. David was not mixing up around the, uh, the, the, the elites in town. No, he was right there, but he was skillful. He was playing on to the Lord God Almighty. From his own background, David was brought back to town. That can also happen to you. Number four, he said of David to be comely. Comely means what? He was pleasant. Even though a shipkeeper, no matter whichever job God is giving you to do, people have given you to do. Be comely. Be so pleasant. You're keeping the doors. You're driving. You're a storekeeper. You're a secretary. Be comely. Be pleasant. When you're pleasant, you learn to socialize with people. And then people come to you. But if you're known only for frowning, scaring customers, scaring people, scaring men from coming to you, how then do you get a husband? You're not comely. How do you get a wife, a good wife, good husband? And so many have lost out simply because they have not been comely. David was comely, not minding his own background. Oh, I pray for someone today. That the Lord will transform you and make you comely. The words you speak, soft spoken words, can defray any kind of attacks and dangers. Are you comely? Are you pleasant in the way you speak to people? These things matter. Those are the things that draw destiny help us. Abigail came to David with soft words. She was comely, she was pleasant, and she got connected to King David. I know I'm speaking to someone this week and the Lord will bless you. 
the final thing that was said about David, part of the things that made that servant to recommend David was that God was with David. Oh, is God with you? Romans chapter 8 says what? He said, if God be for us, who can ever be against us? You might be failing because God is not with you. Any nation that does not have Jehovah as his own King and Lord, that does not have Yeshua as the Savior and Redeemer, will not succeed, will fail woefully. Nations that had God as their God and suddenly began to retreat and to withdraw, to backslide. Israel suffered it 70 years in Babylon because they withdrew from their own God. But when they returned to their God, their God returned to them. I don't know who you are, but I'm saying that if God is not with you, all the degrees, all the certificates, all the monies you have and every other thing will end up in penury, in sorrow, in pains. But that is not my prayer for all of us. Just like God was with David and he secured favor and moved into the palace from being a shapekeeper into the palace, God is ready. Jesus is ready. In John chapter 15, he says, except he be with you, you can do nothing. Except Jesus is with us, we can do nothing. I pray for all of you that are listening today. Your destiny help us are very close to your door. But God wants you to be prudent. God wants you to be skillful. God desires that you be comely, you be pleasant to attract them in. The Lord bless you. Remember how Father Abraham, he attracted visitors that were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He was comely. He was hospitable. He received them. I pray for that woman. I pray for that man. That the Lord God is sending destiny help us to you. As you open up your hearts. To be. What God wants you to be. Thank you so much. It's Yusuf Yaakob Ufise. With the moment of truth. Till we come your way again next week. In the mighty name of Jesus. As many as decide to align with our Lord Jesus Christ. To surrender their lives. The Lord will be with you. God bless you mightily. Till we come your way again next week, in the mighty name of Jesus. Shalom. God bless you.